Hello everyone, welcome to ET Studios and today we are having a look at something completely different and starting out a series that I am incredibly excited about. I am going to be going through a journey of getting to thrust vector controlled model rockets and we're starting out today with a very basic flight computer that will be going into a small, relatively low powered rocket and this is my little test bed to make sure that I actually understand what I'm doing and just to get myself used to the coding and used to the inertial measurement units and all that sort of thing and make sure that I'm ready to start this journey. So today we are not going to be doing anything thrust vector controlled related and if you're interested in following the journey then I recommend watching each episode as it goes because I'll learn things as I go but if you're interested in that specific aspect the next episode will be covering a bit more of it but essentially I have started designing my own thrust vector control mount which I'm not quite ready to show yet, but I will be in the next episode. And it'll be using a fairly basic design, and my goal is to not need to do any 3D printing or any particularly important and special manufacturing, because I don't have access to a lot of things that people do, because I live in South Africa currently, and I'm moving to the UK later this year. But at the moment, I don't have any access to the sorts of things that most people are in, say, America. and I can't 3D print and I can, I'm very limited on what I can get in terms of uh, computer parts for uh, or components for boards like this and that sort of thing. So I'm starting out very basic and as we go it'll get better and better. When I move to the UK I think we may see a bit of a, a drastic change in how many things I can do um, and I'm probably realistically only going to fly a thrust vector control mount once I've moved there. I will probably build one um, before I do, but only fly one when we get there, mostly because of rocket motive availability here is not great and it's fairly limited, so I don't have any long burning rocket motors in South Africa, which means I can't fly anything for, that'll actually be usable on thrust vector mount. But let's go through the basics of my little flight computer here and tell you what is going on. So. This is going to be running on an Arduino Nano, a very basic Arduino, and it's got a little buzzer, a little RGB LED, and there will be an inertial measurement unit over here, which is a gyroscope slash accelerometer. And that is, let me get the model number for you so I don't get it wrong, but I'm pretty sure it is the LSM6 DS3, which is relatively similar least manufactured by the same people as the LSM9 DS1, which is a fairly well-rated one. The reason I've gone for this is, like I said, I am in South Africa, and it is the only one available other than the MPU6050, which I have been advised to not use because it drifts a lot, and I'd quite like to start with one that's good. I have found some libraries for this, and it should be good enough for it to get going. The first flight will not have a barometer on it, so I will not be able to get my altitude from that. I will have to calculate it from my acceleration measurements, which means it'll be less accurate, because if the rocket's pitching over, I'll have to account for that, and it's quite difficult once the roll is involved. But to start with, this is a very nice basic flight computer, and we'll be going into a scratch-built rocket, which will also be part of the next episode. I'm going to start building it, and I'll be flying on an Estes D12-7 which is probably the most powerful cheap engine I can buy. There are a couple E's and H's and F's, but at the moment the D127 looks like it's probably going to be the best option because I can get them in packs of two, and if I fail the first flight I can still use the second one, and I won't have to go and buy another motor, which is quite nice. So yeah, I have started designing the rocket, and we will move over to showing you that, because it's quite an interesting thing, and I'd like to go through it in this episode as well. But just so I can show you this rocket, uh, not this rocket, this flight computer working, I'm going to boot it up quick and show you how it works currently. So let's get my hands out of the way. I'm just going to hold on to this battery. I, I'm, I've ordered battery clips, but they're not here yet, so let's just hold this on here. So blue LED means it's processing. This is the mode where it would upload the data. And the beeping, which you may or may not have heard, depending on if I have RTX voice on or not, is 
uh, telling me that it has not found the inertial measurement unit, and it's gone red because there's an error. And I've done a lot of testing. I've actually used a little analog joystick here, which I have used to like simulate some x and y values. And my program essentially logs those onto the onboard flash storage of the CPU, and then uploads it to my computer on the next time I plug it in. So it'll read those out, and I can throw them into Microsoft Excel or something like that, and make some nice graphs of rotation and acceleration. There's very limited storage on board, and I am looking at getting a flash chip, so in future I'll be able to log more data. So we'll see how that goes. I might be able to add two because they're I2C devices, so or I2C, however you want to say it. Um, so I can daisy chain them, kind of. And I haven't done it before, but I'm interested too, so we'll see how that goes. But this is the very basics. I've put it all on a breadboard for now because I want to make sure everything works. After the first flight, if everything goes fine, I might get myself a nice proto board and solder everything together so it's actually a proper flight computer so there can't be any moving parts. And then we'll fly again on that. And that'll be the basis for the flight computers for the first rocket. And there will be two rockets. There'll be the first one, which is literally just a little development rocket to see how this flight computer will work. And then there'll be a second rocket, which will have the thrust vector control mount in it which I'm going to build later on this year. These episodes are going to be few and far between. I'm hoping to try and get them out relatively often, but I do apologize. Projects like this take time, and it's my first time undertaking something this crazy. So let's move on to my PC. I'm going to show you my open rocket simulation for a little rocket that will be flying this flight computer. So here we are in open rocket, and this is the basics for the first flying rocket that we'll be using, and I'm quite excited about this. So we have a fairly basic looking rocket. The separation line is here, and the reason for that is that the ejection charge from the motor will pop out these parachutes and push off the top of the rocket, and there'll be two separate parachutes, one for the lower section and one for the upper section. The nose cone will stay fixed, and it should all work just fine. So these two parachutes, are going to be very basic little parachutes that I'll build, and then the flight computer will go up here, and I'll balance it out by moving the battery around, because that's probably going to be the heaviest part, and then we should be fine. So this is a D12, and I've run some flight simulations. They're not perfect, but they're okay. 50 meters in altitude, which is not very high, but just fine. And I might have, I might add a slightly higher launch rail, um, but this is all subject to the actual final weight of the rocket, which I'm going to have to find out as I build it. If it happens to be too heavy and it becomes more than the 278 grams here, I will probably end up going and buying the slightly higher powered E or F motor. But at the moment I'm looking at getting the D12 and Hopefully the mass of the rocket will be lower than this. This is like a, a mid-level estimate, estimate, so hopefully it'll be this or lower, but we'll just have to see. So that's pretty much all I have for you for this first episode of my journey to thrust vector control. I know that there isn't actually any thrust vector control in this episode, but it's all part of the process, and I wanted to log this journey all the way from the beginning. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any suggestions, if you have any ideas for what I can do, and please just let me know in the comment section below and I'll be happy to respond if you have any comments or suggestions on this video. The next episode should be relatively soon and once I've got my IMU and I've got my um, flash chip or uh, whatever I've got to start the flight computer and just have it going, I'll make an episode then and probably include the start of the construction of this rocket. Um, overall, just a couple specs on it, I know I didn't say too much, this is a 50 millimeter wide uh, airframe, and these fins are not final, they're definitely going to change, and I'm going to have to figure out the coupling mechanism, but that, that's the basics of it, and um, I will definitely be going through the, the start of the process of that in the next episode, and we'll be testing the flight computer to see how it works on the ground, maybe I'll do some basic tests, move it around, or even like throw it on a remote controlled car or something and see 
how it detects its acceleration, etc. So that should be pretty cool, and I'll be seeing you in the next episode. So thank you everyone for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe if you want to keep watching this series. I think it'll be absolutely awesome as we go. So there we have it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.